Good morning everybody, welcome back to the vlog and welcome to Vlogmas, which isn't Vlogmas because I'm not vlogging every single day of December because I just cannot but we're going to kind of call it Vlogmas because it's December and I'm vlogging I feel like my pyjamas this morning are giving all of the Christmas vibes you've seen these before, I got them from Abercrombie but I wore them on my quarterly trip they're so cosy and I feel like the print looks like I should be sipping hot chocolate in a lodge somewhere you know they also come in red which are even more Christmassier is that a word Christmassier I feel like that was terrible English and speaking of Abercrombie I did actually do a huge order on their website and I actually have a try on haul to share with you all because I'm working with them in this video so maybe I shall insert the haul that I filmed yesterday and then I'll see you back here afterwards to chat whilst I'm doing my makeup it's 11 a.m and it's that dark it's given 6 p.m. I hope you can see me properly, but I can only apologize for the miserable, terrible weather we're having right now in the UK. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys this coat, which I have been living in. It's from Abercrombie and Fitch, nearly smashed my mirror. So here it is on. I went for a size large. I'm usually a size medium, but I wanted it to be a little bit more of like an oversized masculine fit. And sometimes I think when things are a little bit more oversized, sometimes they look a little bit more expensive, depending on how oversized you go. But this in particular, I think it looks really good. It's a herringbone style print, which is very on trend this season. But even though it's on trend right now, this is something you could definitely wear for years and years to come. It's a very classic print. So you're not going to be like buying too much into a trend to the point that next year you're not going to wear it, if that makes sense. I just think it looks so chic and you can layer up underneath it, especially as it's getting a little bit colder. You can put a jumper underneath and keep yourself cozy and warm. But it's such a great coat for like not caring what's underneath. Like I just have a roll neck on, a pair of black skinny jeans. Imagine with a chunky boot, you're probably seeing me. Black handbag, like, and you are good to go. I feel like you could wear it to work, you could wear it out with your friends, super versatile and I'm just so extremely happy with it. I love it. So that was the first thing I got. If you watched the last vlog, you've already seen this cozy knit cardigan because I actually wore it the other day out with my friend and I've worn it many times since, okay? It's just so easy to chuck on. It's super cozy. I love the cable knit style. I did also mention that, that it's got a double zip so you can zip it all the way up to your neck. So as it's getting a little bit colder, you can wear it as kind of like a roll neck or you can undo it this way. I mean, I'm never going to show off my belly. So that zip is going to stay firmly down on my cardigan. But, you know, it just gives you a little bit of versatility and it's just great. It goes with jeans. It goes with leather leggings. It's just really lovely material. I'm wearing this in a size medium. I would say just get your regular size because it definitely fits a little bit oversized. And it also comes in different colours. They do it in cream. This is the beige version. And by the way, I will link everything down below. So if you see anything you like, you'll be able to shop it from there. The next thing I got was this bomber jacket, which I am... I hate it when people say I'm obsessed with stuff because it's so annoying. Like, I'm obsessed with this, I'm obsessed with that. But genuinely, I'm obsessed with this jacket. Like, look at it. I picked it up in a size large, so one size bigger than my regular size. I know it's really annoying I always talk about sizing. But if I don't, and you guys are wanting to shop it then it sometimes makes it harder to decide what size you need, okay? So I got it in size large. It's quite oversized, but as you guys know, I like that. Underneath, I've just got on like a little grey knit. You know what? I just thought this camera is kind of a little bit high and I'm very short. Is that a little bit better? You can kind of see the length of this jacket now, which, do you know what, is another reason why I really love bomber jackets, because for me, they're the perfect length. They're not too cropped. They're not too long. Like, I love a long coat, like the one i just shown you, but sometimes, you know, you can feel like it's kind of heavy and a little bit overwhelming. Where a bomber jacket does the job, it keeps you warm, but it's not too much, you know. And I just love the whole look with, like, a white t-shirt, a knit, bomber jacket, trainers, super chill, and an outfit that I will wear over and over again, literally. Now, I've said this before, but I will say this over and over again because it's so true. Oh, my goodness. Christmas hasn't even started yet. And I need to lay off the mince pies. <laughs> but what I've mentioned before is that Abercrombie do denim so well. They also do lots of different styles. Whether you're petite, regular or tall, they have something to fit everyone. They also have a curve range. And for people like me who have very short torsos and can't wear high-waisted jeans because they literally come up to my boobs, they do mid-rise jeans, which are so rare. I feel like they're really hard to get hold of. Abercrombie do them so well and in so many different colours. Like, I love them. But these are called the mid-rise baggy jeans. And I just find they fit so well. I mean, slightly tight around the waist, okay? But we're just going to ignore that. But in all seriousness, 
they are a great jean. But do you know what else Abercrombie do is they do coats in different lengths as well. So if you're petite, you might find that quite often if you try on a long coat, it will be way too long for you. But they do different lengths in coats, which is really genius. So, you know, the herringbone coat that I showed you, that comes in different lengths. I also picked up a really classic trench coat because I do actually have another trench. However, it's very light, you know, it's a very light beige and I find that colour kind of looks better in spring. So I picked up a slightly darker colour beige trench as I felt this would look really nice against black like this in winter time. I'm super happy with it. I feel like it looks even nicer in real life than it does on the website. Because I would say that is an issue with shopping online, isn't it? You see things, you order it, it arrives and you think, this is not what I was looking at. <laughs> I have to say, this is even better than I expected. And just for reference, I picked it up in, let me check actually. So this is a size medium, I would say size down, because I think it does fit quite big. But it also has got a label here that says it's water resistant and wind resistant. Do you know what, I'm so happy with that. Now I picked this little cardi up because I want to wear this Christmas Eve because the little pearl details, let me show you up close, the little pearl details are just giving me all of the kind of like Christmas vibes. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could wear this any time of year, but it's really comfy, but it's just a little twist on your regular cardigan, which kind of dresses it up a little bit. And on Christmas Eve, we usually have like quite a chilled evening, but everyone gets a little bit fancy, but not too fancy. Christmas Day is like when you do the proper dressing up. I mean, you can wear your pyjamas Christmas Day if you want to, but you know, I tend to wear sparkles Christmas Day. So I felt Christmas Eve, this would be a really cute little outfit. Comfy, but with a little bit of jazz on the buttons, you know. I picked this up in a size medium. I kind of wish I'd got it in a size small, because I think if it was a little bit more fitted, it might look a little bit better, but then I hate things when they're tight. Yeah, how cute is this? And the last thing I picked up was this top, which I thought would be fab. You know when you say to your friends, like, what are you wearing? And they say, a nice top and a pair of jeans. I feel like this is the winter version of a nice top because it's all covered. It's going to keep you warm. It's got long sleeves. However, it's kind of sheer on the arms. I don't know if it's going to show on camera. And it's sheer on the chest area. But it's got a cami underneath that matches it. So your belly and your boob area is a little bit more covered. And I just think it looks really kind of chic with a pair of black jeans. Imagine it with a heel, a gold earring. I'm probably showing you in a cutaway. You know, if you went out just for drinks with the girls, but you like you didn't want to look too dressed up. It's such a nice little top. I mean, you could definitely wear it just out casually as well. It's got a really lovely neckline on it too. I mean, it's so simple, but... I think it looks fab. That was actually everything I picked up from Abercrombie. So if you've seen anything you like, it will be linked down below in the description box. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the vlog. I've just put so much contour on, I look like a what's it? You know, like the crisps, look how orange I look. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little try on haul. My favorite thing has to be that coat. Like I am obsessed with it. I've worn it so much. I just feel like it looks so chic. I'm slightly bleary eyed this morning. I don't feel hungover because we actually got in around half nine, which is unheard of. I had my friend's Christmas day out yesterday, Friendsmas, whatever. Well, actually it's not Friendsmas because we're having that next weekend where we'll have like a Christmas dinner together. We've done that for years and it's like one of my favorite days of the entire year. But last night we had a girl's day out. We were actually meant to go to Winter Wonderland, but it didn't end up happening because it rained and it just, it wasn't the vibes at all. So instead we went for lunch to Bob Bob Rickards, which is actually a restaurant I've wanted to go to for such a long time. It's been around for years and it lived up to all of the hype. The food was incredible. I'll actually insert some videos that I got. I'm not much of a beef eater, as you guys know, but they had beef wellington on the menu. And some people next to us ordered it and it looked insane. So we ordered beef wellington. We had truffled mashed potato, regular mashed potato, truffled fries, green beans, spinach for starters. We had caviar, cheese souffle, we had prawn cocktail, and there's a little button where you can press for champagne. I feel like that restaurant is famous for the press for champagne button, and we pressed it about 15 times. <laughs> and we all had desserts as well, and if I'm completely honest, I can't re no, do you know what, I had a creme brulee, I was about to say I can't remember what I had, because I think the champagne had gone to my head by then, but no, I had creme brulee. We had a mixed berry souffle, a sticky toffee pudding, and a chocolate bomb. Look at the size of this parcel. Like, it's literally the size of me. 
It's not anything too interesting though. Well, it is kind of interesting. I'll unbox it with you all. As I was saying, the food was incredible and I would fully recommend Bob Bob Rickards. And then after that, we actually met up with some friends who were also in Soho and then we ended up in a drag bar. It was such a great night. Although we got home just before 10, had a slice of toast, two pints of water and I woke up feeling fairly fresh. My eyes do feel a little bit heavy but nothing too crazy. Do you know something I really rate is this Refi Brow Gel? Well, it's the Brow Tint, I think it's called. But I use it every day and I feel like my eyebrows look so much better once I've used it. I use it in the shade Soft Brown, just in case any of you want to buy it and want to know what shade I am. I have to say my skin is so dry and crusty today. I actually had my second session of microneedling done last week. And even though I really loved the results, afterwards your skin almost goes slightly scabby and then it goes nice again. So I'm going through the slightly scabby stage and hoping it goes nice pretty soon. I had it done at Pandora Longs, which is a clinic in Chelsea, but I actually had it done by a girl that works there called Lo, but both her and Pandora are incredible at what they do. And I just totally trust them. They're so knowledgeable when it comes to skin. I actually have been there for Haifu, which is another kind of facial treatment you can have. They also do something called the Glow Facial. They do so many different treatments and I actually just love going there so much. And I really wanted to focus on microneedling for some scarring that I've got around my mouth from when I used to get a lot more spots than I do now. I mean, I've currently got a spot on my chin that doesn't want to leave, but yeah, I do have a little bit of scarring around here, which I'm just trying to work on getting rid of and microneedling really helps. It also doesn't hurt because they numb all your face. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not like painless, but the pain is so bearable. But I'm hoping to do about six sessions. They say six is when you see the best results. So I'm hoping to do six sessions and then I will be able to show you my before and afters, but I can already see quite a big difference. I also meant to say at the beginning of this video, a huge thank you to all of you that commented on my last video giving me advice on whether to keep the Maximara cape and the, um, the totem scarf coat. It's so helpful, you know, when you give me advice. Like, I appreciate it so much. It's like having a massive group chat with people who all have fashion. Like, it's just the best thing ever. The cape, the Maximara cape has been returned, but I can't decide on the totem coats. Currently, I still have it, and I think I might keep it. But if any of you have seen a good dupe somewhere of that jacket, send me it, because I would be tempted you know get a similar version and uh, send this one back that is going to be the makeup today it really is not anything too special i really need to get the orange out of my fringe because that is not a vibe right now but we're only walking to battersea power station because i have so many errands to run okay i need to go to the post office i need to go to the every delivery people i need to pick some parcels up i also need to pick something up from battersea power station so i felt like i could get my daily steps in get outside run a load of errands and maybe look around the shops, maybe pick up some Christmas presents whilst we're there. And I just really love it around there. I could grab some lunch, see the ice skating rink, maybe get some Christmassy vibes food, and you are all coming with me. So let's pick an outfit. Is it really gonna be a big deal? Ow, that my socks don't match. I feel like it is gonna be a big deal, to be honest, because they're gonna go over the top of my leggings. I don't have any matching socks. Like, it's a real issue. I've gone for a very brown, comfy look today because this little brown set matches my new trainers. I got them from New Balance, but I actually got them from ASOS. They look like this. If I show you up closer, you can see, look how cute they are. The brown suede, super comfy as well. So I'm gonna wear these with this tracksuit and then I have a brown coat, which I'll show you in a minute. But first, let's open this big parcel up. So, some of you might remember that I got, I mean, you might not actually, because I don't think I told you on vlog. I think I put it on my Instagram story, but it was, March 2022, so 18 months ago, I bought a suitcase from this company here, Antler. I bought a carry-on and I bought a big suitcase. I used it for the first time when I flew to Dubai with Emirates. When I landed, one of the wheels was missing off of my brand new case. So I emailed Antler Customer Services and said, look, I have this new case, it's been on one trip and the wheel has come off and they said that it was not their fault, it was the airline's fault, and wouldn't replace the case. I mean, I wasn't actually bothered about replacing the case, but they could have at least sent me a new wheel. But they didn't. And I never then got in contact with Emirates, because you're meant to do it, I think, when you're at the airport. I didn't realise that was what I was meant to do, so it never got done. And I have been using a case <laughs> for the last year, 
well over that 18 months that has been drunk so you know whenever it stands it's kind of like leaning to one side and then because the wheels had so much pressure on them because the weight wasn't balanced properly I lost another wheel and it's just it's just not been living its best life you know my suitcase it's just been under a lot of stress you know despite the dodgy wheel and the not so great customer service I absolutely love the suitcase because it fits so much in it and I'm someone that has the inability to pack light. I take the kitchen sink to an overnight stage, you know what I mean? And this thing fits so much in. It's also really light so, you know, it doesn't take up some of your um, weight allowance. You know, some suitcases are super heavy, like Ramoa suitcases are so heavy that you can barely pack any clothes because the weight allowance is basically all suitcase, you know? And to be honest, as far as suitcases go, they can be really, really pricey, and these are a lot more affordable. Is this actually the right size? Yeah, I think it is. And then the other day I got an email from them, you know, just like a newsletter email, a generic one saying they were having their Black Friday sale, and the suitcase had been reduced from £240 to... 169 I think I paid for this. So I very begrudgingly ordered myself a new one because the wheel situation couldn't carry on any longer but I needed a new suitcase. And to be honest, 169 pounds is a bargain. I mean, even 240 pounds is a bargain. They have put their prices up though because I looked back at the email when I first bought mine last March and I only paid, I think it was 199. So anyway, they put the price up but hasn't everyone else like have you seen the price of ketchup at the moment seriously but something that's so good about it is it's got these zips on the side so the case expands which is why you can fit so much stuff in it you see it gets even bigger and overall it's a great suitcase but it'll be interesting to see if this one lasts longer than the last one i mean i hope it does because 18 months out of a case is not the vibes we're after it's been on a few trips mind you but it broke on the first one so yeah anyway yeah, that was a really fun unboxing of my new suitcase and the reason I also got it is because I'm going on a very exciting trip next week and you're all coming with me because I'm going to be vlogging so I need a new suitcase for the trip. I do feel like it looks smaller than my other one though. But maybe, maybe it's not. The more I'm looking at these socks, the more I'm realising it's so obvious they're completely odd socks. I don't think I can go out like this. Like, should I just put black socks on instead? Maybe that would look better. Like, you can't probably see on camera. This is the colour I need. These are kind of too purple. By the way, this full outfit is from Bali and it's so cosy. I'm going to use my Palm Springs Mini and, um, yeah, let's get on the road. By the way, I need to tell you guys, you know the White Company heated blanket I've been raving about? It's back in stock and it's worth every penny. Honestly, one of my best purchases of the year, to be honest. If you were thinking about getting it, get it. It stops you from putting the heating on as well. Also, look how incredible these roses are. Just ignore the bag of quavers I had there. But yeah, look at these. They're unreal. I also got the new iPhone. I need to set this up. I've actually had it a couple of weeks. But I'm really funny with new phones. Like, I hate change. So the thought of having a new phone just kind of gives me the fear. But I need to set that up today. Um, but yeah, I just want to tell you basically about the blanket. It is literally the most miserable weather ever. Weather ever. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. No, honestly, it's tragic, okay? It's cold, it's wet, it's windy. Why I decided to walk here, I just don't even know. A very gloomy and moody London today. It's just not the vibes, is it? This is my favorite bridge. At nighttime, it all lights up. Here's the bridge up close. See, it's kind of pink. And then look at all the lights. Kind of gives Christmas vibes, but it's actually like this all year round. Maybe later when I walk home, we'll see how lit up it is. Look how autumnal this looks. It's like a little autumnal wonderland. I'm really trying to make the most of living in London over the next few months because I haven't actually told you guys yet. Even though I think you kind of already knew it was going to happen, but I am going to be moving out of central London and where I've lived for the last three years which has gone so quick I'm gonna be moving in February which is kind of sad it feels like the end of an era but at the same time I'm kind of looking forward to it you know just a bit of change I feel like I've done my London 
busy life and I'm looking forward to a little bit of a quieter life. Don't currently know where I'm gonna go or what my plan is. So that feels a little bit, not scary, but it's not very nice when you feel like a bit unsettled, you know, but I am very confident in the fact that things will work out. Something will fall into place. But yeah, I'm just trying to make the most of the fact that I can walk to the shops and walk into central London. Despite the awful weather, I'm just gonna really try and do more over the next three months that I'm gonna be living here. But yeah, it's gonna go so quickly because by the time Christmas is gone, I'll basically be moving. But um, yeah, oh look at these dogs. <laughs> I made it. I can barely talk because my mouth is that cold and the weather is just getting worse and worse and worse. Oh my goodness. Look at the rain. I'm soaking wet as well. Oh, it's so cold. There's lots of nice restaurants here. Bruce is actually going to meet me here and we're going to have some dinner. Oh, look how cute this is. Is this a carousel? It is. How pretty is that? And then you've got the ice skating over here as well. Joe Malone sponsored the ice rink. So look, there's Joe Malone. Decorations everywhere. And there's a giant Joe Malone gingerbread house. How magical is that? Oh, if any of you have got children, or even if you don't have children, but you want a fun day out in London this time of year, I think this is so great. I mean, it'd be better if it wasn't raining, but look how nice it is here. Got the London skyline, the ice skating rink, and if the weather was better, I think it would probably be a real vibe. I mean, it's not so bad now, but um, yeah, if there was better weather, it'd be great. And look at all of the Christmas lights. I don't know if it's going to show much on camera, but the whole place is just covered in lights. Oh, it looks so pretty. I don't think I've ever seen a shopping centre looking this festive. It looks so nice. As I said, I don't know if it's looking as good on camera as it does in real life, but it looks amazing. There's so many nice shops in here, you know. You've got me and M, Chanel, Pinko. Is that how you say that? <laughs> Aesop, Reformation, Space Inc, Apple down there, Lilabo, Locatane. Is it is it Locatan? Locatane? I'm not sure. <laughs> Reese is here and we're going for some food. Well, Reese has gone for what he has everywhere we go. Fish and chips. Although sometimes you switch it up, but you're a fish and chip kind of guy, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, I actually went for something really different for me. I had butter chicken with rice. So I don't really know why I fancied the curry, but I just did. So yeah, I'll let you know how it is. Look how nice it looks from up here. I told you there were so many lights and Christmas trees. We've really randomly decided to do this tour that you can do in Battersea Power Station, where you learn all about the power station and then I think we got to a viewing platform. So this is very spontaneous and interesting. Battersea Power Station has been a bold presence on the London skyline since 1930s, colossal yet nimble. The site has reinvented itself many times over from a coal-fired power station to a global cultural icon. Now it has transformed again into a new London destination, its towering chimneys remaining a symbol of past industrial strength. The power station was one of the most advanced of its time, incorporating the latest technology and engineering innovations. At the peak of their powers, the furnaces generated a heat so intense with an incandescence so bright it's been said that it was impossible to look at with the naked eye. Look at this guys, we're at the top of the power station. We're in one of the chimneys. And there are some of the others. But you can see Winter Wonderland from up here. Let me zoom in. <laughs> We've now ended up in a pancake shop. I've got salted caramel, marshmallow and banana. And Reese has got maple syrup and banana. I don't know if any of you are like this, okay? But I feel like I do everything on autopilot. 
So I just lost my vlog camera. I have been down to the car. I've been thinking, please do not tell me I left it in that pancake restaurant because if I did, someone is gonna get my vlog camera and see all of the footage of me half naked, not in a sexual way, but when I'm getting changed during my hauls. Probably various other bits. I crop out my vlogs of me talking to myself and things like that. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, I've left it in a restaurant. Someone is gonna find it and like it was giving me the fear but i went down to the car i've emptied out all my bags i've tried to retrace my steps but as i said because i do everything on autopilot and i'm not really thinking about what i'm doing when i'm doing it i just couldn't think where it could be and then i came in here to take my makeup off because i thought even if i can't find my camera i need to go to bed and my camera was beside my sink. Don't ask me why, but I'm just thankful it's here. I actually ended up having a really random evening. I love Battersea Power Station, I have to say. And we did the little tour thing up in the lift. And we can now say we have been in one of the Battersea Power Station chimneys. Why am I struggling to speak tonight? I don't really know. But yeah, it was quite an experience, I have to say. The view wasn't amazing because it was raining. But it was like a nice little spontaneous thing to do. We also got some pancakes before we left. I have to say the food in the Gordon Ramsay restaurant was so blooming good. I had a chicken curry. Reese had fish and chips, I think I showed you. Honestly, we loved it. Definitely go back. I'm such a creature of habit with restaurants. Like, not when I wanted to go to my fancy, but you know, like when you just want to get like a quick dinner, we always go to the same old places. So it was nice to kind of switch it up a little bit. I've got so much to do this week and my brain just feels so chaotic. You know, like where it's hurting my head to even think. But if any of you experience this, and I think it's something that happens a lot around this time of year, I feel like in December there's a lot going on and you kind of feel like you're here, there and everywhere. But a trick, this isn't anything new by the way, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's something that really helps is to write to-do lists. So just go on your notes app on your phone and select the little circle ticky things, <laughs> do any of you know what I mean? Where it comes up with a circle and then you can click the tick once you've done the job and it's so satisfying ticking it off. I am sometimes guilty of making to-do lists and adding jobs. I've already completed just so I can like tick something off. Is that sad? Does anyone else do that or is that just me? But I love to write everything down that I need to do because it then kind of takes it out of your head and it puts it on, I was gonna say a piece of paper, but it's not, but it's like your phone. And then you can look at it with a clearer mind because everything you need to do is kind of there in front of you. I don't know how it works, but it really does. My nan is such a worrier. Like she worries about worrying, okay? I feel like that's where I get it from, to be honest. But I told her about writing to-do lists and she said it's really helped her as well. So if any of you are out there feeling a little bit chaotic and your brain's feeling crazy, write a list of everything going on in your head, write everything you need to do and then tick it off. It's honestly a game changer. And the reason I'm saying this is I've actually just done it for my day tomorrow. So my to-do list is as long as my arm, but I'm going to bed with a little bit more of a peaceful mind because everything's written down, typed down, you know what I mean. Do any of you remember I said I was gonna gua sha every day until Christmas? And I didn't tell you all, but on about day four, this is what happened <laughs> to my gua sha. <laughs> Smashed into a million pieces all over the floor. I've actually been saving it in my cupboard to show you the fact it smashed. I dropped it into my sink. I have smashed so many of these blooming things. They drive me insane. Then my gua sha every day till Christmas didn't end up going to plan. However, I do now have a metal one, which hopefully will never smash. It's actually from Lancome. And I've been trying to be consistent, but I find it's better for me to do this in the mornings. So I'm not gonna do it tonight. I'm gonna do it in the shower tomorrow morning just because my face will then be wet. There's a little bit more kind of give on my skin. But um, yeah, do I look 10 years younger yet? <laughs> I actually can't put any actives on my skin for a week because I had microneedling done, which actually I feel like I've already told you about, haven't I? But um, my skin's just extra sensitive. So instead, I'm just doing a double cleanse every night. And then I'm using this from Avant. I hate the fact that I always say, am I saying things correctly? But I'm unsure if I am or if I'm not, but this is their proactive, salicylic acne and imperfections repair treatment and i have to say it's really really nice put a small amount all over my face forehead and neck uk lash lash serum then for moisturizer we're keeping it very simple with cerave this is what i've been told this week to keep my skincare routine as simple as possible just to kind of let my skin heal from the needling 
and then you flip it on and I'm actually going to use some of the Lancome Genifique eye serum just on my under eyes i love this applicator it's metal and it's so cooling when it goes on to your eyes i once learned that with eye serums you should put them on almost in a figure of eight so like over the bridge of your nose and then over the top like this it's actually such a nice sensation i don't do this every night but i got told on a cordley trip that you should do that speaking of cordley the cleanser that i used was from them i'm also going to be washing my hair tomorrow so I'm just gonna do a little bit of rosemary oil on my scalp before I go to bed. And then I'm just gonna use my Tangle Teaser to massage it into my scalp. A little bit of moisturizer on my hands and that is me ready for bed. So I shall see you all in the morning. Good afternoon guys. I have teeth went in jail in my retainer so if I start to speak funny, that is why I've just tried on an outfit, which I think I'm actually going to wear this evening. I'm going to Very's Christmas party and Very are a brand that I work with on a monthly basis and I love them so, so much. And they always put on the most like amazing parties and events. So I'm really looking forward to it. But I was wondering what I should wear. The only way I can show you the blazer properly is by standing on my stool. But this is from Very. It's actually from River Island, but Very stocks so many different brands on their website. It is just meant to be a blazer, but I think I'm gonna wear it as a dress with really dark tights. Underneath, I have on this sparkly fishnet kind of top, which probably isn't looking that great on camera, but in real life, and especially when it's dark, it really sparkles and it kind of sticks out of my sleeves as well. And my shoes are Jimmy Choo, and my bag, I'm not over it. Like, I can't get over it, but my bag is also Jimmy Choo. We've got a very exciting video coming up, guys, which, Honestly, I feel like I'm living in a dream. These are my accessories and I can't really quite get over it. But I'm actually gonna wrap this vlog up now because I am about to go and run to the nail shop. Don't stress, I am gonna get changed <laughs> before going then come home and get back changed again. But I need to get my nails done. I need to get this vlog uploaded. I've got about a hundred million things to do. And I'm also starting another vlog, possibly tonight or maybe tomorrow. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will hopefully see you in my next vlog. Lots of love. Take care guys. Bye bye.